Whew, I need to take a deep breath, TB. Yeah, same. We're back. We're back at it. What the fuck, dude? Where have we been? Everywhere. Where haven't we been? The city. Yeah, we really just been in the city. City Boy Weekend, City Boy Week, New York Fashion Week, commercials, documentaries. Harlem, podcast. Harlem, Soho. Harlem. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Should we do a Super Bowl recap? <laughs> Super Bowl recap. Rihanna Bowl. pregnant again? Uh, that wasn't the recap I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> but Not sure. a big sports guy, but no. Nah, at the end, I thought maybe the Eagles they had one last play. You know, the Chiefs just did. They played it smart. They said the we're, we're gonna waste. Didn't the they miss a field goal too before that? That they did. He must have been shaking. Well, I mean, what happened was the Eagles were were laying it on hard on the Chiefs, and the Chiefs didn't know how to handle it all. This young, fresh team. They went back into the locker room. They got it together. They have the one of the best players in the league, in Patrick Mahomes, and he came out. And he showed why he's the best. And the Chiefs nice. showed why they're the best overall team. Yeah. You got to get some content with them. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Benny, hit the, hit the NFL up. Hit the Chiefs up. <laughs> Benny, what episode is this? 17. Episode 17 of the Real Ones podcast. What's going on, TP? What is going on? How are we doing today? We're doing great. It's a beautiful day outside, actually. It's a beautiful morning. Beautiful day for some beautiful podcasts. Who do we got on today? Joe Ross. What does he do? He is one of New Jersey's best basketball trainers. Mm. Honestly, could be one of the best on the East Coast, mm. in my opinion. Just a pleasure to work with the person. Very motivated, driven. Let me uh, Let's get, let me the get, intro let me get into this intro yeah, real let, quick. I want to hear this. It's, it's, it's pretty fire. good. Normally, Joe writes up the intros, but this one's good. I took it. Give it to him. I took this one. Give it to All him. right. Joe Ross is a former basketball player turned trainer. He has been a big impact in the development of many young players and all the way up to the pros. Joe has created a brand that is growing daily with over 28,000 followers on Instagram and 145,000 on TikTok. He continues to make amazing content while on his training journey. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Ross. Joe Ross is going on. You can bring it with you if you want. Yeah. Yes, Throw sir. it over here. That's a hell of an intro. Dude. Easy. It was good. We, I did a good job with it. Got out the way. All right. And then, yeah, Joe, help him adjust oh, the mic a little God. bit. That's all right. <laughs> Perfect. Go back to your papa. Come here, bro. All right. Dude. Am I looking in a specific direction? Oh, we're just we're talking. Just, just talking okay. Perfect. Yes, sir. Trust right. your work. Yes, had to wear it today. Yes, sir. What, what's that? What's that mean to you? So for me, trust your work is just um, kind of the motto that I've had since I started my training business. Is just uh, I believe in what I do as a trainer, um, and if you don't believe it, you know your your clients aren't going to believe it. So for me, it's just kind of going in every day, believing in the stuff that I'm teaching my players and. Uh, you know, I think that's important for my players as well to believe in themselves. You know, they have to believe the time they put in the gym, um, it's going to pay off down the line for them and, you know, they'll produce and and have great results in wherever they're playing. So for me, you know, it's just kind of the mindset of every day believing in what I'm doing and uh, just kind of putting my best foot forward. Trusting the process. Trusting the process. Right. When did you first come up with the idea that you knew you wanted to start training training basketball i know you probably been playing basketball since you were a little kid right right so for me it was um i actually worked like a regular sales job my first year out of college um a full year of it and i just knew it was not my passion i went to school um for sport media so i knew i wanted to do something in the sports industry Mm -hmm. um for me basketball has just always been my passion what i've known the most um what i had the most um, love doing. Um, so for me, after that year, I knew I wanted to get involved in something sports related. So I ended up actually landing a job at the NBA Replay Center. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool experience. Um, get to be, I guess, have a foot in the door with the NBA. Um, what did they have you doing there? So basically, when you guys watch your games and you see, you know, referees go to replay, um, They'll put their headsets on and they're communicating mm-hmm. with Secaucus. Um, and that's actually where I'm kind of stationed. Yeah. Um, we help speed up the replay process as best as possible, provide like the best angles for the referees who are in the room 
to ultimately, you know, get the call right. So your replays are going straight to the refs. Are they the ones that the people are seeing on TV as well? Right. So people don't know that a lot of times the refs on the court are just listening to what the referee in the replay center is discussing. And, and the most of the calls come from Secaucus. Oh. So, yeah. So just helping with that process, you know, you're pretty tied into the game. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but the thing with that is that was just a nighttime job. You know, it only happens during the live games. Mm -hmm. So I needed to figure out a way to fill in uh, my space during the day and, and do more than just those nights, yeah. which is when I got involved at, at a, you know, a couple local gyms, just trying to post basketball content and fill up my time and make an Instagram page. Didn't really have Oh. the thought process of jumping right into training. So I it just, started off with content. It started out with just oh. drills. You know, I made a JRR wow. Hoops page. I knew I wanted to post some some yeah. footage of myself. Kind of gave me a way to get back involved with basketball. Yeah. And then after, you know, I want to say maybe a month or two of posting steady content, a couple people started to reach out and said, hey, you know, are you in the gym? Can you put me through some of these drills or some workouts? Um, and then, you know, I started to post that, that content working players out, mm -hmm. slowly started to hone my craft on working players out. And luckily, um, I guess because I'm from this area, guys knew of me as a player first. Um, so they knew I had a basketball background, got them in for a couple workouts and then through word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, you know, guys started to trust me a little bit more started to get more high profile players, especially um, two of my teammates in high school went on to play professionally, mm -hmm. um, Rob Ukawuba and Amir Bell. Yep. So I start working those guys out and you know they're pretty trustworthy basketball sources, you know, so once they tell a couple guys kind of stemmed from there. So yeah. Dude, that's, that's amazing. I feel like mo most people normally like start off with the training aspect and right. then are like, the I, yeah, I need, I need to start putting out content. But for you, it was like, just. It really was. It was already. the opposite. And I had had, you know, in the past I had done some things with locally working out players mm -hmm. in town. Um, I actually had a position with Cornell at one point, um, Cornell men's basketball while I was still in college. It was like an internship opportunity. Um, and I worked out a couple players at that point. So I wasn't completely brand new to the um, workout aspect of it. But going into it, I, I really did not have uh, the mentality that I was going to be a trainer. Yeah. It was really just some shooting drills, some, you know, handle drills. Yeah, this guy's <laughs> you know, crazy this morning. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, just the more I was in the gym kind of led to uh, yeah. really taking a dive into the training side of things. So do you feel like that since people saw you already putting in the work yourself and saw so, like the skills you were gaining from that, mm -hmm. they were going to trust in you more? I think so. I think there's something to be said about uh, a steady, um, you know, just being steady with whatever it is, consistency. Yeah. Um, so for me, I was consistently putting out content. Um, you know, I wasn't even playing anymore, but I was still providing people with footage and, and advice on different drills they could do. So I think it gives them almost like a, a comfort feeling that this guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah. You know, he's, he's showing us, not just telling us. So I think that helped in terms of uh, me being a former player. Mm -hmm. Did you play basketball in college? I did. I did. I played at Ithaca College in New okay. York. Yeah. Um, good program. You know, mm -hmm. we had some success while I was there. Um, so that's where I went out of high school. Um, was able to reach a sweet 16 while I was there for Division Three. Wow. Had some success there. It wasn't the career that I had hoped for at the college level. Okay. Um, you know, I had a little sense of burning out, honestly, mm -hmm. um, in college. But being removed from that, I think that's when, you know, I, I really started to miss it. Um, and I j just the passion really never officially died out. Yeah. Do you, um, do you remember like a moment where you had the thought of like, okay, maybe my playing time is is over and it's time to move on to the next phase of my life? I think there was. I think it was, um, there was a point in college where I just found that I, I was not enjoying going to practice every day anymore. Um, it felt more like work at, at a point. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think that all varies. You know, you'll get some great coaching staffs. You'll get some, you know, guys that maybe you don't agree with. Yeah. Um, and I just felt like I, I, I don't know if I want to do this every day, you know, for my whole college career. My body's starting to hurt. I was in the, you know, the training room a lot. Yeah. Um, and, you know, from my freshman to my sophomore year, my minutes increased. You know, it wasn't like I was a guy that wasn't playing. I, you mm-hmm. know, had a role on the team. Um, but just I, I lost that. I remember there was a point in time where I loved, you know, everything about basketball. I loved going to practice. I was excited on game day. Um, and there was a point where I just I no longer felt that. And it was almost more like a chore. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously there was never a doubt that, you know, I still love the game, but it was certainly became more work than uh, enjoyment yeah. at a certain point. So when you dove back into the training aspects of things, did you get that feeling back? Of I a hundred percent did. Yeah. And that's when I knew I was going to, you know, take this and, and make it my job because I just, it was the purity of just teaching the game again and just being back on the court and and that being my work, you know, back in between the lines and just shooting. And um, it just reminded me of all the great things about the game and how much as as a youth and um, just learning new aspects of the game, how much I love that. Um, For me, that really sparked up that love again as soon as I got back to it, honestly. Yeah. How long of a break did you take? So... The way that it worked for me is I played two years in college um, and then took a year off, ended up taking an internship in town at Ithaca's uh, in New York. Cornell University is actually in Ithaca. So I got a good opportunity to work with them. Mm -hmm. Did that uh, to finish out my college career. Then I did that year of sales. I still played, you know, in in men's leagues to to fill the void of missing basketball. Yeah. Um, and then a full year out of college is when I took on the uh, the Instagram page. Oh, yeah. So I'd say since my college days to the training beginning was probably three years. Oh, wow. You know, I still played here and there and pick up games and, and yeah. men's leagues. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I want to say probably two. And I guess technically I was still around the team at yeah. Cornell. But since it was, you know, me controlling my own destiny i guess at probably like two two and a half three years yeah sometimes you need to take that break to uh, really re- reignite that passion oh definitely, yeah. yeah definitely and it's crazy i like kind of just came back around like like everyone like for a lot of basketball players they feel like basketball being in their life means that they're meant to be playing on a team and right and contributing in that aspect of things but mm-hmm. you were able to like walk away from it kind of reevaluate life reevaluate your love for basketball Mm -hmm. and what it meant for you to just enjoy the game right a different aspect of things absolutely it's crazy that's great it's awesome i've like been able to see him like now with what what you do like i've been able to see you do your training and like Mm -hmm. the details like Mm -hmm. the the care he puts into each one of his athletes is like it's incredible i appreciate it alongside of many trainers and like Mm -hmm one of one right here like thank you it's a big compliment genuinely dude no for real do you remember that so did you start off with like mostly college players high school you know so for me i remember in the early days it was a couple guys who were either still in college um or just out of college Mm -hmm. um mixed with local youth you know i had a couple groups of uh younger kids in town that i would work with and then um couple college guys and then like I had mentioned Rob and Amir who are local guys I believe Amir was heading into his first season overseas as a pro and Rob had just had his first year as a pro Um, so it's a little unique in that right off the bat I was working with a little bit more uh, high profile guys and it forced me to kind of learn and adapt quickly yeah I always feel like I have that uh general knowledge just having played and you know being around so much basketball that I have an idea of what I wanted to do yeah but it's just figuring out and tweaking and 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 seeing what works and what doesn't it's easier to test that out out on guys who 
you know, they're not going to judge you right away. They knew that I was just getting into it. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit easier with the youth, obviously. It, it's it's more basic, and you're just teaching fundamentals at first. But when you're working with, you know, pro guys, you got to do a lot to really improve their game. And, uh, yeah, so started out slow. I remember I'd have, you know, one client a day or prepare for one player a day. Um and it's just, you know, it really is amazing. I'll never forget the moment for me where I was just like, wow, you know, I really, I really have, have grown this thing. Yeah. Is, um, again, starting out with one guy, you know, two guys, if I'm lucky in, in a session. I remember it was one morning. Um, I had a group of eight guys, all Division One players and all pros. And I was going through the warm up and just looking around. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Um, from I, I started from complete scratch, yeah. and now I've got guys who are you know had historic college careers, are going on four years as professional as a professional player, doing this for a living, and you know these guys trust me in their off season to help them get better. Um, so that was a I remember you know I remember where I was. It was eight eight guys, all scholarship athletes, all pros. Um, That's awesome. That was that was pretty cool moment. Yeah. So like for us, like when we're on set, like directing, like it's not as easy as just going and telling your ideas to somebody else. And like you got to gain the confidence. And I feel like that comes with like preparation and mm -hmm. your knowledge for things. When did you did you always like from the first time you trained somebody? Mm -hmm. Did you have the confidence to do it or did it slowly build over time? Yeah, it that's that's a good question. I would say it definitely was a slow build. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I started to kind of really hone in on the trust your work thing. Um, but again, it's you have to, as a trainer, you have to figure out a formula that kind of works for you. Yeah. Um, and that's through trial and error. You see things that work. Um, you see, see things that maybe didn't go as smoothly as you would have liked. So in the first year or so, there were times where maybe I was, you know, kind of second guessing certain things that I was doing and not a hundred percent positive that this is the best approach. Mm -hmm. But you know, the more I do it, you learn, um, you know, you see other things that you like from other people. That's the great thing about social media is I pick different things that certain trainers do that I like yeah. certain things that I felt were, you know, maybe corny. Um, and I form my own identity and, and found things that work for me. I try to really mimic uh, more of a game-like style of training mm -hmm. where I'm providing players with moves or movements or finishes or shots that I think in their seasons they're absolutely going to get and they're going to need. So it's a mixture of drilling that out and then playing live where they compete against each other um, and then implement the skills that we're working on into a live play setting. Yeah. And I think that pro guys like and appreciate that, especially um, because they're at the point in their careers, careers where they're so skilled and, and um, advanced already that, you know, doing the meticulous, uh, I don't know, overkill with like cone dribbling drills yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or that kind of stuff, that's beyond them. It's more maybe adding in a few new moves or... Um, working on specific shots and, and plays and movements Stuff that they're, they're gonna really going to be using and right. implementing into their and, own game. And I think pros just appreciate that and being able to compete against other high-level athletes, that's how they really improve in the offseason and test things out um, and get better. So I kind of, you know, I give them the formula in terms of different moves or drills that we're going to focus on, but then I let them go out at each other and take a step back and yeah. just let them... Mm. learn and, and go through things on their own. Dude, yeah, definitely. You have really have to like custom tailor a plan for like each player, each, like everything, right? So it, 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 that's a good question as well. I have different setups. Like if it's a one-on-one -on -one lesson or maybe a, a smaller group lesson, um, I'll definitely tailor it differently. Mm. Um, and you know, working on post things for a, for a big man or working on pick and roll play for a point guard. Um, but the thing for me is a lot of times with my groups, it's, uh, it's a lot of footwork stuff and just really overall skill development. 
So I'm not 100%. I want all of my players to have just basketball skills. Mm -hmm. I don't like to put them in a box. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, because I feel like if, if you really develop everything, your footwork, you know, your handle, your ability to make three pointers, you're just in any, whatever position you are on the floor, you're going to feel more confident in your game as a basketball player. Again, if I'm doing an individual lesson, I'll definitely focus in on specific details um, that maybe cater more towards their game. But, I, you know, in my group settings, it's really, I, I really have everyone almost do the same things at, at, um, to an extent, to yeah. an extent. Do you prefer doing one more than the other? They both are, are uh, beautiful in their own way. Um, I love a one-on-one session with a guy who just is really hungry to get better because we can really break down things. You know, I'll stop him. Um, we'll slow it down. We'll go through the movement several times until he feels confident in those moves and seeing something click in a one-on-one session where they finally get it, you know, and they have that aha moment where this is how it's done. Mm-hmm. And then to see them implemented in a game is the greatest feeling in the world for, you know, a trainer when you spend hours or... Yeah. It's funny when the players get the aha moment, you also get the aha moment for yourself. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's uh, it's great to see. So I love that. Um, but then I also love a group session where you see these guys going at it. Um, yeah. And especially when we work on something in that session. And then again, what I do is I put them through drills where they're forced to to get into those situations and try those moves out. So when they do it on a live body, you know, when they're competing against another player, they Mm -hmm. use that move that we just focused on. It's great. And you can't get that in a one-on-one session um, without that that competition aspect. So they're both great. You know, they're they're both great in their own in their own right. That's awesome. So like the training side of things, you're just killing it for you. So you've been doing content now. Yeah. For for a while. A minute. So has it been a slow build because I know like obviously we've been following you the past mm-hmm. ever since I started filming honestly right you've allowed me into your sessions yeah you film, were really one of the players and I, I'd like to give a shout out uh to TP on this right now is uh he came in when he was brand new to this I'll never forget seeing one of the first videos he did for one of my guys um, and the level that he's at now is just unbelievable, the progression. And I always try to tell him, yeah. you know, I, I'll comment on his stuff, but I was here for his rise as well from uh, Damn. just getting into the Dude, early into session. the video stuff. Yeah. Um, what did TP's first stuff look like? You know, I thought it was great at the time. Everyone thought, but that, everyone <laughs> thought it was, I always say this, everyone, I did not have anyone who didn't support my work because it was the fact that like, I didn't do anything. No one knew me for this. And right. I think it was the fact that I was just doing anything. Right. People were supportive of it regardless. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, to me, it was great. But just co- in comparison to the quality and uh, just the, the intricacies that go into his work now, it's just crazy that I remember him coming into the gym for some of my first guys, yeah. you know, for yeah. some of the he's first players that I early. trained. He's, he's got early sessions. Early for some of his, <laughs> I came in. He was loyal like, and uh, yeah. he's really risen. But Dude, I appreciate it. But yeah, so I remember a few like key moments where mm-hmm. some videos for you really just like just yeah, yeah. really went viral. Like what? So, so was it a slow build? Did it all hit right. kind of all at once? That's, and what uh, was that first video that was like? Right. So, you know, Instagram was a, a more of a slow build. Um, I started out by just following all the people who were on my personal account. I would see who was going to support my new um, business, uh, my new, I, you know, basketball ideas. That's how I started. Um, and then steadily, I would post content with my myself started to get people within the basketball community who didn't know me. They'd, yeah. they, I'd reach them somehow. Um, so I got that wave of a following with just my initial content. And then through the, the workouts, just getting more high-profile players. Mm-hmm. Um, the beauty of the repost, I don't know if that was always a thing, honestly, on Instagram. I feel like that kind of came around at yeah, some point. Sure. 
It's, I don't remember that happening, but I yeah. do remember when I would post videos of players, they would repost it. I'd then get there. Yeah. Guys, um, I'd get some teammates would come in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then the more players you get, the more reposts, you just start to, yeah. there's a little more buzz around you because you're working with these players. Yeah. And then steadily increasing with my own content. Um, I've shifted more towards content of my players as I've gotten more into the training business because you know, I'm there to highlight them, not mm. myself per yeah. se. I am trying to slowly work myself back in a little bit just to to show people that I still yeah um, I mean you, you know, come I up with like play yeah and you come up with like creative ideas too for your videos it's right. not just like showing highlights mm -hmm. like if you go on your page like I mean you can be on there for forever for days just looking at a bunch of different content mm -hmm. funny just real content right. you're breaking down stuff it's it's amazing I appreciate it so yeah so it's a mix I try to keep people entertained with the skill aspect yeah. you know learning teaching uh type of content with some comedic relief in there yeah, might show up to one of your um, high school games <laughs> make how many threes did you make in a row oh that's that's right this that's was right. pretty that, recent that was a funny story that one uh on on video they caught maybe the last seven but i might have hit 20 something in a row yeah fresh off the bench i just popped <laughs> into a saint joe's game yep Unlike anything I've ever seen, they let everyone on the court at halftime. No yeah. organization. But, um, <laughs> it was like a sea of kids. Um, one basketball. I walked out there. I happened to get the first rebound on, on a missed shot. That's went with all right those to, kids out there. That's, right. That was it, it must was, have been tough. It was destiny. And then yeah. I went out to the three point line, started making a couple. Yeah. And for Joe, if you don't know, once you make a shot, you it's respect. Back. You get the ball right, right back. Got to get it back. Um, <laughs> So made the first couple and these kids were all there on the court. So at first they're like, uh, who is, the, you know, who is this guy? Cause I made a few in a row. Yeah. Then it was four, five, six, seven, like 10 in a row. Then start, people started pulling out their phones. Um, and it was great cause there was again, one basketball. So all the eyes in the gym were <laughs> on me yeah. and, uh, I think I made like 24 in a row. Damn. Do you feel but like moment, I, like, do you feel like moments like that, like, are like they're good to post like do you do you get like people like more inquiries from something like that it's funny because a couple people there asked me <laughs> if that if i could train their kid after that <laughs> after that i swear That's um it. which was which was funny but those are like just being around the game random moments like that will happen for me and yeah. that creates good content i've had some other moments like that i can't think of them off the top of my head yeah but just me being around basketball like you know, I popped in to watch a high school game that night, and sure enough, that video mm -hmm. is is one that's going on overtime. And yeah, that's why know, I originally saw it. I, I didn't even see it on your page originally. Right. So you just you never know. So for for me, for Instagram, there's algorithm changes, and yeah. there's different thing that works. When Reels came around, I started to really actually notice a a, a takeoff in um, views mm -hmm. on my stuff. Um, which was an increase in, in followers. I remember I had one video, can't remember what it was, but that was the big turning point. I think I had around like 11 or 12,000 followers. Um, I had a video that made it to one of those pages, mm -hmm. got like a nice chunk of like seven, 800 followers. And from there- Is that the half court shot? I don't remember which one that was. Because I, I do remember one that went viral and what you were just sinking it from half court. That It could have been that one, <laughs> but I noticed a big increase from that video. And then reels right after that started to really become something that Instagram was pushing. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was where I really started to take off. Certain videos that get hot, mm -hmm. you'll really get you know followers from that. Um, so still, you know, from, from nothing to almost closing in on, uh, almost 30 K Yeah, dude. and I'll tell you this, uh, on, on the record, um, between Instagram and TikTok, I have never purchased a single follower, uh, never did any of the extra stuff for views. I know that's important, you know, and, and I'm not saying that as a, as a knock on people who are trying to build a business. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it look, you know, it looks nice when you have a, a certain amount of following, but just something I take pride in is, you know, never spent a cent on advertising, just completely organic growth. Um, so that's something I'm proud of and, you know, just staying consistent with my yeah. content, trying to put it out. 
um, you know, as, as much as I can, um, an authentic feel to it. And I've been able to amass, you know, that amount of followers completely uh, real. Do you now have brands reaching out to you? Are you dipping into the, I see you got the Trust Your Work merch Yeah, on. you know, I, I got to really uh, get more of this <laughs> stuff. I really haven't put any real merch out, but I do. I, I'm starting to get a couple brands that'll reach out. Um, I try, though, to keep it to stuff that fits within my type yeah. of content. I'm hoping some bigger things will roll around, but I've had some fun opportunities here and there where, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like it's not overdoing it because I don't want to be that guy that suddenly everything's promotions, uh, lose that, that yeah. you know, you don't want to do it overkill, but I'll take a, you know, a good opportunity where I think it fits within what I'm doing. Like, uh, you know, I had ba a ba people send me basketballs, shorts, um, some food places I've been able to partner with, mm -hmm. um, some, some fun, fun brands that I, I have no issue kind of doing yeah. a, a sponsorship with. And so I'll, I'll pick and choose for sure. Mm -hmm. They are rolling around. I think they somehow, a, a, a net is cast based on, you know, I guess your, your following or views yeah. on certain sites on TikTok. I think a lot of it comes from. Mm -hmm. So you put on like clinics as well in, in camps. Yeah. How, how are those going for you? Like getting the real big group of right. kids together or, yeah. or pros? So the camps is, is great. Um, clinics as well. Those are some of my favorite things to do because I can reach, you know, a, a large number of people and get my message of how I do things and how I train um, to a large number of people. Mm -hmm. They can kind of learn about me and who I am as a person, what my style is, um, and I love those, again, because it, it reminds me of when I started to fall in love with the game, going to those camps and clinics. Some of my you know, best moments and, and learning was from those kind of things. So I try to keep it fun, um, keep it exciting for the kids. I don't want to make it six hours of camp, all drill work. Um, you got to mix in, make it fun for the kids and make it memorable, things that they want to come back and do again. Do you have so, kids like just showing up, just... Because they've watched your videos online? I, You know, I think there has to be some of that, especially yeah. uh, with, with the youth and how into TikTok they are especially. People definitely find it exciting that they can come to my camps and they've seen me on the internet. And um, I think I, I'm sure I get people from yeah. that. But for me, that's also, that's something that's great for my business. Mm -hmm. um, to be able to get that amount of people in one day, I, I love doing the one day camps because uh, not only is it good for me and a, a good way to get a lot of people um, knowledge at once, but then if they like that, then maybe they'll do more small group lessons or more individual lessons when they have yeah. time. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's awesome. And I'm all the way up to now doing like four weeks of my own summer camp. Wow. Which I'll tell you, it takes a toll on the body. <laughs> I'm sure. It takes a toll on the voice. Yeah. It feels like I played a game seven after some of those <laughs> camp days. Yeah. Exhausted, exhausting. Um, but I love it. And I think, you know, I've built up a nice reputation in the area for parents trusting me with their kids and definitely helping them improve their game. When you kind of dip back a little, when you do get like a new athlete that comes to train with you, do you ever have to like set expectations with them and their parents about about certain things? That is that's certainly um, I guess a battle in, yeah. in training is figuring out the balance of honesty. Um, you know, you don't want to you never want to shoot down anyone's goals. Definitely. But I certainly do provide them with without directly saying maybe what, what their limits are, I'll give them realistic goals. You yeah. know, I'll try to provide them and, and make it clear to them that you want to, you know, you want to have goals, but at the same time, you, you want things to be realistic because when a kid gets in over his head and he has all these expectations that are yeah, maybe not even his goals, maybe more so just what his parents want for him, Maybe. I have a way of at, at least communicating with parents where they're, they'll listen to me, yeah. I think, and maybe temper their uh, 
their lofty goals a little bit. Um, you know, some of these, some of these kids, you know, for them making the freshman team might be a huge, huge goal. Mm. And these parents are thinking varsity basketball as a freshman when simply, you know, yeah, you, you, you gotta, I've been a part of some scenarios where you gotta understand, yeah, you know, limitations to, a little bit. Yeah. I've been like, I went and filmed some kids before and you just, b- basketball is like such, it's, I say it to him, like, it's a beautiful sport. It's a beautiful community of people. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think there's one sport where, like, it, it's it's like a, like, like, when I first started filming basketball, mm-hmm. people who liked basketball supported me because it's it's basketball. You're all a part of this, like, community. Yeah, absolutely. this community of things. Like, I really don't see it. I mean, every sport has their community mm-hmm. but i'm just saying like basketball just feels a little different at times is that typically in jersey or like kind of like i mean everywhere? jersey especially i feel yeah. jersey's such a hub for basketball mm-hmm. like i mean the the debate can go on for for a right. long time but <laughs> jersey is basketball basketball mm-hmm. is jersey a right. lot of great talent has come out of jersey but yeah just the support systems like crazy like i didn't even know what i was doing and i already yeah. had people supporting me when i didn't even know who they were like firm yeah shout out firm shout out visual hub firm martin Mm -hmm. all these people seen me seen me grow and it's it's crazy it is crazy it is crazy um how do you stay so consistent with the social like are you putting or do you have people edit are you editing everything yourself are you putting everything out yourself so it is a one-man show right now jrr hoops it's just me so Mm -hmm. i'm doing all the on-court stuff all the scheduling all the editing of the uh content oh wow so it's a one man show. It's a lot, but um, how do you like it? I, you know, for me, I really do enjoy having my hands involved in everything. I think at a point, as I continue to grow, I'm going to have to add additional people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just like I like being in control. You know, I like having my. I'm the final say on yeah. on what goes through and. I don't have to answer to anyone. Mm-hmm. When you're putting stuff together, are you ever overthinking a post or is it just just daily? You're just So it's not daily. It I will say that. It's not daily. I try to get something, maybe two to three things a week if I can. Okay. I try to post on my story consistently. Yeah. Like I'll try to get every day something on the story just to keep it fresh. Um, let people know that I'm working with these players and... I'm at this game just to kind of take take people through my life and, yeah. and what I'm doing. With the actual posts, I try to be a little bit more um, specific on what I'm doing. I don't want to make it overkill. I know some people try to say, you know, every day get something out for me. It creates a little bit more of, I guess, a, a surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, when people are getting one or two things, they're not, I'm not giving away too much. And that way I can, you know, I don't, you know, I don't uh, lose content. You know, you can mm. stretch it over a little bit longer. You don't want to give everything out every single day. So that's kind of my approach. I try to stay consistent with something every week uh, on a post. TikTok, um, it's more consistent in the summer because I have more good content in the summer with everybody home. Yeah. Um, more team stuff, working with like programs during the winter, travel teams, school teams, that kind of thing. So I try to not honestly have my phone out as much. Mm-hmm. Um, when working with teams, I got to keep it a little bit more professional. Yeah, it's different. It's a different mm-hmm. dynamic with guys that you know, and mm-hmm. um, they help me as with marketing when I'm working with better players. You know, people want to see that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll do more of that in the summertime. Uh, but yeah, just try to try to stay consistent with it. Daily story posts. I'd say at least one or one or two a week for um, wall post types type stuff. But mm-hmm. that's kind of so now, I'm where at. do you see <clears throat> like from your following to the training aspect of things? Mm-hmm. Do you have a goal in mind? Do you see it all going in a certain direction? So, for me, I really try to take it one day at a time. Mm-hmm. I definitely have things in the back of my mind that I think about long term. I just, you know, for me, it's just every year I've been able to connect with more and more people, 
whether it's uh, athletes or school teams or businesses, I just have seen a steady increase. Yeah. So just, you know, maybe more camps, more partnering with other people, more going into new areas mm -hmm. to, to do things, uh, expanding the camps, expanding my group sessions, just kind of leveling up everything that I already have in place. Yeah. Anything on the content side of things, or you're just going to continue to... I think content, just being steady. Yeah. Um, Any ideas brewing? Your own podcast? <laughs> you know, I love. I do love being on a podcast. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful to be here today, honestly. I, I don't know. That could be something in the works down the line. Mm -hmm. I'm so busy with, yeah. with being all over the place. I don't know if I could get a consistent uh, yeah. podcast on my own. I love popping into stuff like this, but... I think, um, you know, I'm always, I've got the creative juices flowing with new video ideas and, um, you know, th that kind of thing. So hopefully growing that as, as much as I can and new opportunities with brands and that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, nothing, uh, nothing too specific that I can think of on that front. Yeah. So you've always seemed like such like a chill, easygoing guy. Is there ever moments where things get like really hectic and you need to step away? Like what, what are you doing to sort of mentally just decompress from all of it? Right. And mentally there certainly are times when, like, when you're, you're doing it on your own, mm -hmm. there's times where it's overwhelming for sure. Actually just examples that I can think of is I want to be able to just focus on the workouts, but I've got to work on scheduling texting every player to figure out what time specifically works for them. Can I fit this person in at this time? Calling people to let them know about my camp, sending out emails about camps and events. It's a lot. Yeah. You know, it's a lot to figure out how to make everything flow smoothly. And then on top of that, be on the court and and do that side of things. So it's, it's certainly that that's when I feel sometimes it gets hectic, especially as events roll around yeah. where I have to put in time to do the marketing, um, again, making calls, sending emails, yeah, like yeah. that's, that's the extra stuff. And then on top of that, doing my own workouts, it's, it's a lot. That's when I, I see I have some stress, but I take, you know, take a step back, breathe. Um, it always works out. Yep. So it's just uh, trying to calm myself down a little bit um, and, and I'll work through it. I always do. But that's when it gets hectic for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is I try to take at least, you know, a couple vacations, small, small breaks after, you know, I'm doing a ton with camps. I'll take something at the end of the summer when all of my guys are away. And then this this year, midwinter, when things kind of slowed down a little bit, I, I went away to Florida because it's important. Nice. You got to oh, keep your mind right. 100%. You don't want to completely burn out. So for me, again, that's the beauty of being my own boss mm -hmm. is I can take days, you know, yeah. when I want or if my body's just not feeling great, step away and kind of take a day for myself to, to regroup but I love being on the court. I, I always miss it. You know, by the yeah. end of the vacation, I'm ready to get back out there. And it's like your meditation as well. Right. Almost. Right. That's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Rapid fire. So we're just going to just throw questions. We're going to go back and forth throwing questions at you and you just answer it in like a sentence or, okay. or less. So what's your favorite pair of basketball shoes? Um, I love Kobe's. I haven't had a pair in a while. The best pair I ever had, I think, was Kobe 5s. I wore them my senior year of high school. Beautiful sneaker. They're just a little too expensive for yeah. me right now. But I love my Kobe's for sure. Your favorite water brand? <laughs> Probably Poland Spring. Oh, Poland cool. Springs? Yeah, classic. classic. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Classic. What, um, what was the first video you posted? First video I posted was a form shooting video. Um just a staple of who I, what I did as a player, just kept it basic. And I remember that was the first thing I posted on Instagram, a little form shooting right in front of the rim. <laughs> nice. Your favorite drill? Favorite drill. Um, 
I'd say probably one of my reaction one-on-one drills, um, mm-hmm. just seeing guys get to the basket and uh, compete. Usually you'll get some dunks mixed in. Um, so probably some type of competitive one-on-one finishing drill. Is there an athlete outside of basketball that you've trained? Muhammad Sanu. That's the first one that pops into mind right away. Um, awesome guy. Awesome guy. Local guy from South Brunswick. Um, a couple times I've worked with Mo. Um, he loves it because of the footwork aspect. He thinks yep. that it kind of relates to a lot of football routes. Um, so shout out, Mo. Hopefully we can get one in soon. He's probably my favorite non-basketball one that I've worked with. Is there a dream athlete you would like to work with? You know, this one's going to probably shock people because he's not. Well, obviously, I, I'd, if I could work with LeBron James, that would be crazy. Yeah. But I, I'm going to throw out my personal favorite, Obi Toppin. Um a guy that I feel like is greatly misused on the Knicks. Maybe this will go viral. You know, I hope it does because I think he's being wrongfully played by Tibbs. And I'm a diehard Knicks fan. So at the end of the day, the team's success is most important. But I think that's a guy that I could really uh, help develop. And uh, he seems like an awesome guy, fun fun player to watch. So yeah. Tag him Obi Toppin. Yeah. Oh, no, we'll get you this clip. All, All right. right, Obi, if you hear this this summer, come through to Jersey. Yes, sir. Favorite favorite food? Um, love sushi and love a good steak. Yes, sir. Damn. <laughs> Your personal favorite basketball player? Huge LeBron James fan. Um, probably his biggest supporter as an as an you know, in terms of non Knicks guys, I always am fighting for his yeah. uh, goat the goat debate. I I really am just in awe of his game and how he still does it at this age and just how he plays as a team player just provides everything on the court. So LeBron James, but I also love Carmelo Anthony. He has he was a Nick and provided me with some good years, uh, all things considered, but I love Melo as well. A dream facility to train in. Dream facility. Uh, what do you mean exactly? Like So uh, like it, so Say like if an, I like, like yeah like if an, say an athlete from a pro team was like hey I I want to bring you oh it's gotta be MSG yeah never you know I've been to a ton of Knicks games never stepped foot on the court never got to do like one of those pregame shoot arounds or anything that's the mecca um, if I go. could if I could step in there and do a OB, session and, come to Jersey and then we're coming to there MSG yeah MSG for sure right there if you can give a piece of advice to your younger self what would it be I'd say stay the course. Stay the course. Um, trust your work. Trust your work. That's a good one as well, because <laughs> um, that's something I really believe in now. Um, but yeah, I've, there's been bumps in the road. I've had you know issues myself with uh, when I was playing with you know health related stuff with my lung, um, which is a, a whole nother story. But just there's going to be ups and downs. There's highs in basketball. There's lows in basketball. There's times where you know, it's not going to be fun, but just keep plugging away, keep trusting your work, um, and things always seem to work out if, you, you, if you're consistent and just uh, enjoy the bumps in the road and the journey. And uh, yeah, just that's what I would say. What's a short piece of advice you would give to someone who's chasing their dream but is about to give up on it? Ah, <sighs> That's a good question because... It, it's times like that where sometimes greatness just just happens. But it's, again, having the mentality of plugging away and coming ready to work every single day. Um, you just got to believe. That's where that self-belief and trusting your work comes into play. I know I've said that a lot recently, but that's really the moments where it... it uh, it really rings true is there's going to be difficult times where you want to give up and you don't see the vision as clearly as you once did. Um, but you just gotta, if, if it's something you truly love, you gotta, you gotta stick with it and see it through. And I, and I just believe if, if you really want it, you can go get it. You can get anything you want. Um, it's just a matter of how much you're willing to sacrifice to get there. Um, but yeah, just, just stick with it, trust your work and, um, there's, there's brighter days ahead. And where can the people find out more about you? If you want to find out more about me, I recommend, uh, following me on Instagram. You can follow me on TikTok. Um, 
Those are kind of my two main ones. It's J-R-R underscore hoops. But yeah, that's you can reach out to me. I'm actually really good at answering my DMs. <laughs> if you've got questions, um, I'll be here to answer them. You can find out more about my training that way. We've I've got a website hopefully in the works where I can kind of make that my main page. Uh, that's the next step for me. Yeah, dude. Believe it or not, five years in, no website still, just rocking. And you with get the you a Instagram website and, and then a, a cover page video for that website. <laughs> yeah, hey, that that this is the spot I'd go for that. <clears throat> yes, for sir. Sure. You want to give us a quote? Close down on a quote to that camera. If you have a dream, um, go chase it. You got to believe in what you're doing, though. Um, put your head down. Get ready to work every single day. Um, and you got to work through the bumps in the road and just keep pushing. Um, trust your work and uh, go get it. Definitely. Joe Ross, everybody. Awesome, dude. <laughs>